Hey there, Dr. Joe McCullough here, best-selling author of Accelerated Learning Techniques for Students, and I'd like to welcome you to this month's video blog. This blog will actually be part one of a two-part series on the top 10 rules of good studying by Dr. Barbara Oakley from her best-selling book, A Mind for Numbers, How to Excel at Math and Science Even If You Flunked Algebra. Let me say that I love this book. I think it contains a wealth of good information for any student studying any kind of math, science, or engineering course where you're routinely problem solving and dealing with equations. So for this month's video blog, I'm gonna go through the first five of her top 10 rules of good studying and how you can apply those rules to any kind of math, science, or engineering course. So let's jump right into it. Rule number one of good studying is use recall. Recall basically means to remember and retrieve the information on your own without referring to any outside sources. So for example, let's say you're studying how to do a particular math problem. It is not enough to just look at the solutions, review the solutions several times, and think you know how to do it. You actually want to make a conscious effort to recall and remember the steps of the problem on your own without referring to any other sources. This is the key to really understanding the material and learning it. If you cannot recall it and retrieve the information without referring to some kind of solution, you don't really know it. Let's take a real quick look at how the brain stores information and let me give you a little analogy that might drive this point home. If we were to peer inside your brain or Homer Simpson's brain or anybody's brain for that matter, what we would see is that there's approximately 100 billion neurons. Neurons are the nerve cells of the brain that are responsible for thinking. Anytime you learn something new, what you're really doing is connecting together neurons in a complicated neural path of millions of neurons connected together. And when you recall information, what you're doing is firing a signal over that set of neurons, retrieving the information so that you can then use it. Now we have so many neurons that if you look it's an incredibly complicated web of neural connections. Think about this. Anytime you're reading a solution to a problem it's almost like looking at a map of some kind of path. Now you looking at the map is not enough to really know how to walk the path yourself. You actually have to go out and walk it. Same thing is true when you're looking at the solution of a problem. It's like looking at the map it's not enough to just look at the map. You actually have to do the problem yourself. When you're doing the problem, what you're really doing is walking the path of the neurons connected together in your brain. The more times you walk this path, the more well-established it's going to become, the easier it's going to be for you to recall the information at a later date. So use recall whenever possible. Every time you remember the information and retrieve it on your own, you're strengthening that particular neural pathway and it's going to be easier for you to retrieve the information at a later date. And that really is just the key to learning is being able to retrieve the information when you need it. Rule number two of good studying is test yourself. If you cannot retrieve the information, like I said before, you don't really know it. How are you going to know whether or not you can retrieve the information? By testing yourself. And one of the best ways of doing that is using flashcards. And an even better way of doing that is using a particular website called Quizlet.com. And let me just quickly show you some of the cool things you can do with Quizlet. If you haven't heard of Quizlet, I highly recommend that you visit Quizlet.com, create a free account, and start playing around with some of the different kinds of flashcards you can create. What Quizlet lets you do is create a series of flashcards, study them, and test yourself in different ways. And one of the great things about Quizlet is it has an app for the Android or iPhone, iPad, and this is really useful because now you can use your cell phone as a study tool. And anytime you have a spare minute where you're waiting in line or waiting between classes, you can use this to study and recall the information. One way I found particularly useful of using Quizlet is memorizing all of my students' names. Let me give you a quick example. Now for this, 
I didn't want to use the actual Quizlets I created, so I just made a quick little example. So let's say I'm trying to memorize my students' names. What I did is took pictures of all my students, uploaded the pictures along with their names, and I could quickly go through the flashcards, try and remember, recall what the name is. Morgan Freeman. Angelina Jolie. Leonardo DiCaprio. Using Quizlet, I was able to memorize a class of 72 names in about an hour total of studying. And I broke this up into about five, 10 to 12 minute study sessions, but that was enough to remember all 72 names, first name and last. You can also create your own flashcards for vocabulary terms, questions, things like that. So for example, What is Newton's third law? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Which color in the visible spectrum has the lowest frequency? Which has the highest? Red has the lowest frequency, violet has the highest. You also have the option of recording your own voice, which can be particularly useful while studying. Anyway, this is a great, great tool. I highly recommend you check it out. It really goes well with the first two rules of studying. One, use recall. Two, test yourself. Every time you're using these flashcards, you're testing yourself, trying to recall the information, and strengthening those neural pathways. Rule number three of good studying is chunk your problems. To chunk information means to take a group of related pieces of information and memorize them as one whole piece. For example, phone numbers with area code have 10 numbers. However, most people don't memorize 10 numbers as individual pieces. They memorize three chunks, the area code, the first three numbers of the phone number, and then the last four. Much easier for the brain to remember three chunks of information that are related than 10 individual unrelated pieces of information. What you want to do when you're doing problems is rehearse the problem, do it over and over, so particular related steps can be memorized in terms of chunks. So rather than having, let's say, 10 steps that are necessary to solve a problem, you've done it enough that you start to remember these three or four steps all is one chunk, the next three or four steps is all one chunk, and the remaining steps is a chunk. So chunk your problems by doing them enough times that your brain starts to chunk together related pieces of information, and that's going to make recall of that information much, much easier in the future. Rule number four of good studying is space your repetition. What this means is that it's much, much better to study a little bit every single night than to study for three or four or five hours in a single night. Think of the brain as a muscle. If you were going to the gym to get stronger, you wouldn't want to go to the gym once a week and spend five or six hours there. After the first hour or two, you're going to start to get less and less and less benefit from any more time you spend there. It's much better to go to the gym every single day and work out for an hour and space out your workouts rather than trying to do them all in the same day. Just like training for a marathon. You can't train for a marathon in a single day you have to do it over months and months. Same thing is true of studying. If you really want to get the most bang for your buck, what you want to do is spend a little bit of time studying each subject every single day. I'm here to tell you that four 30-minute study sessions will give you more benefit than one four-hour study session because you're spacing it out, you're giving your brain time to consolidate the information, you're refiring those neural pathways, and the more times you do it, the more established that neural pathway is going to become, and the easier it's going to be to recall that information at a later time. Rule number five of good studying is alternate different problem-solving techniques during your practice. What this basically comes down to is mix it up. Don't study the same problem or the same kind of problem over and over and over again. Eventually, you're going to start to get less benefit from continuing to study the same problem over and over again. In essence, you're relearning what you already know. Your time is better spent exposing yourself to as many different kinds of problems as you can. So during any study session, ideally try and mix it up 
solve three or four or five different kinds of problems and study those three or four or five different kinds of problems until you chunk it, you can retrieve the information and you really understand it. Well, that's it for the first five of Dr. Barbara Oakley's top 10 rules of good studying. Stay tuned next month and we'll look at the last five rules. Until then, happy learning.